can't share deep ideas unless you have a confidence that that you can defend those ideas. And it doesn't mean that you have to be able to fight with everybody that you meet. But what it does mean is you maybe you should have a plan for it. Be careful when you separate that because there's, there's, there's two very dangerous things in the world. Cowardly intellectuals and stupid warriors. Both of those people have the ability to create incredible damage, incredible damage. People who are both of those have also the ability to create incredible damage, but they're controlled, but they're self-controlled. I'd encourage you to think of, of, of warriors as just kind of like physical beings. In other words, don't think of them just as people who fight in, in wars. They're also, also athletes. Think of athletes as, as warriors. Um, if you're an athlete, especially if you're a team athlete, don't miss the fact that whatever team sport you're playing is sort of like a simulation of combat. In other words, it's a way of acting out the actions of combat without actually killing each other. If you're a football player, you know, you're, the two sides are colliding, you're trying to push the enemy back to a certain point. That's the whole point of the football. You're trying to push the enemy back across their lines. They're trying to push you back across their lines. The same is true with soccer. You're trying to push the enemy you know, and, and, and get to a certain goal to establish it, and they're trying to defend that one goal that they don't want you to reach. You know, all team sports are simulated combat. That's one of the reasons that uh, we like them so much. Because it is one of the reasons that you know, we have international games. We have like this country against that country. That's what allows like Spain to, to, to play against, against, I don't know, France and not actually go to war over it. We're allowed to, we're able to just play sports instead as a, as a proxy. Um, individual sports, of course, are just like that. You know, even just playing tennis back and forth is a simulation of, of, of a type of combat. But that's also one of the reasons that we really like the ones that get close to it. We really like boxing, we really like MMA, because it gets us as close as we possibly can to, to real combat without actually killing each other. That's why we like the gladiator fights. And so um, one of the reasons, like for example, when you see MMA fighters, the ones who seem to make the most money are the ones who can get the biggest crowds and those would be the people who have the biggest personalities. So it kind of begs this question. Um, do you think that, that MMA fighters realize if I, if I have a big personality, lots of people will watch my fight and therefore I'll make more money? Do you think they're aware of this? Do you think they're just going to get lucky with it? What's that? Yeah, they're probably very aware of it. I mean, if you look at, at, at Conor McGregor and the guy just talks a lot of trash. Why? Because the more trash he talks, the more interested we get. Because we want to see that, 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 that conflict, that fight. And, and you can see that the fighters typically understand this as well, generally speaking, because they'll just be just mad trash talking back and forth for months beforehand. And then the second the fight is over, they're in the ring hugging. You know, I love you, man. Good job. Way to go. Because they understand they're not taking it personally. They know what it is. And it's kind of, and even that trash talking thing even simulates the, the shit talking that goes back and forth between countries in, in days leading up to war. And so... Um, the point that I'm making is that we can kind of combine these, these things here, athletes, warriors, any kind of physical kind of conflict you might say. Okay, so what Thucydides, of course, is getting at is that if we separate these two, and then if we don't expect like intellectualism out of our warriors, then they're going to be fools. And if they're fools, then your fighting is done by fools. And that's really, really dangerous. Because when does a fool stop fighting? Um, Never really. What's that? He fights the other person, but not them. Yeah, and then after that, they go find somebody else. <laughs> when you see, like, like for example, um, uh, when you see, um, uh, there's, just, there's just one off the top of my head that I'm thinking of. You, anyone's ever heard of the My Lai Massacre? By any chance? It was uh, during Vietnam, there were some, some American soldiers who went to a village looking for the enemy. The enemy wasn't there, so what they did, they just killed all the, all the people in the village anyway, like 500 people or something like that. Just completely slaughtered all these people. Um, why? Uh, because that was fighting that was being done by fools. And, and you, if you were to ask them, why would you have done that? And they'd have been like, because it's wartime. That's what happens during war. Oh my God. Do you want to win the war? Yeah, and that's how you win the war. No, that, that's really not how you win the war. You don't win the war by making enemies of, of everybody in the whole country. But you, 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 there are better ways of, of, of winning the war. And by doing that, you completely undermine the U.S. war over there. And that kind of almost marked one of the turning points of the whole war. It was completely counterproductive to that. 
because they did something so incredibly stupid that it turned the whole tide of everything. That's what happens when you put fools in charge of the, of the fighting, when you get intentionally stupid people. Um, when you think about who some of the, our greatest warriors are, for example, in the United States, who pops into your mind? Who are the best of the best? You all know this, and you've all heard of these people. Yeah, which ones though? Yeah, but which ones specifically though? What's that? And when we think of like the, the, the best fighters in, in the military, Marines. who do we think of? Marines. Marines. Even, even more specific than that. Navy SEALs. SEALs, Rangers, <coughs> Search and Rescue, yeah, Scouts. Because we realize that you know, there is like, a great fighting force, and then there's like the elite of the elite. Now, how difficult is it to become one of the elite of the elite? Exceedingly difficult, yeah. Do you think that, so for example, one of the things that you have to do is become like uh, proficient in a whole bunch of different weapons applications. Do you think that a, a, any fool can do that? No, no, you have to be pretty smart. Um, I know a lot of team guys, they're, they're, one thing they all have in common, they're all pretty damn smart. They're all pretty damn smart. And that's because they're a different kind of a breed. Can you get anybody to pick up a rifle and point them in the right direction? Yeah. Can you get them to make the best decisions though in wartime? Not necessarily. As much as you train them because there's a lot that, and it's not to say that they're fools, it's to say there's a lot that goes into it. Incredible levels of stress. Stuff that you cannot simulate. So if you don't open up, I'm sorry, if you, if you, if you kind of separate these groups out here, these folks over here are always going to be fools. Now, of course, on the other side of the coin, you know, you've got scholars. And we think of scholars as being... I'm not a nerd. What's that? A nerd. A nerd, okay? Um, and what happens if a nerd has an idea that you disagree with? You try to prove you wrong. Yeah, and what can you do? Either argue or go away. Uh, they're too smart. You can't argue with them. They know too much. I haven't studied. I could go away, but then that destroys my ego. What else can I do? Fight. Yeah, I can kill them. <laughs> Why not? Because they can't fight. I already know this. They're a nerd, so they, you know, they've spent all their time in books. So now, what in, um, how courageous can a, a scholar be? They, a scholar can only be as courageous as you are forgiving. A scholar can only be as courageous as you are forgiving. Because if they say something that you disagree with, you just kick the shit out of them or kill them, whatever. You know, how, how, whether they live or die is entirely up to you. And you might be like, oh, but then they can build a nuclear bomb. They can't build it. They can come up with the idea, but they've got to have somebody else build it. And besides, they're going to nuke you? Come on. They can build a gun. No, they can't build it. They can conceptualize it. They can tell you how it works, but in terms of building it, no way. It's almost like, you know, these folks kind of like need each other. But if they need each other, then what that means is that you've got like a humanity, and that part of humanity is scholarship, and part of humanity is... Is this physical exertion? It doesn't have to just be athletes and warriors, by the way. You know, also think of this as like work, you know work uh, workforces. And if that's the case, it's almost like a whole humanity is part warrior, part scholar, and that makes a whole humanity. Well, if that makes a whole humanity, then it sounds like that would also make a whole person. You follow? So, in other words, should you be a warrior or should you be a scholar? The answer to that question is probably yes. Yeah, absolutely. Both. Yeah, you should be both. Why separate these things out? Because if you look at, 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 at what it takes to be these things, well, it takes courage and bravery to be a scholar. And I mean like a real scholar, not someone who sits behind and, and hides behind people. But you know, if you're going to have some deep idea, if you're going to have some earth-shattering idea, you, what's the point of having deep ideas if you're too afraid to share them? You have to be able to have, you have to have the courage to, to share them. And to have the courage, you have to have a reason for the courage. I know there are people who walk around like, you know, quite, I mean, I don't know, I mean, quite clearly they've just never had their face punched in because they'll run their mouth. But why? Well, because they live in a society that protects them. And now if you take them out of that, out of, out of, that, out of that society, or just put them on the street with someone who just doesn't care about, about going to jail or something like that, well, all those ideas amount to absolutely nothing. You can't share deep ideas unless you have a confidence that, that you can defend those ideas. And it doesn't mean that you have to be able to fight with everybody that you meet. But what it does mean is you maybe you should have a plan for it because a lot of times things go that way. You know, there are a lot of ideas that throughout history people have, 
I mean, look at Galileo. Galileo had, had to, you know, was, was persecuted by, by, by the Catholic Church. If Galileo had an army, he wouldn't have had to, 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 to kowtow to them. And I'm not saying you should raise armies and fight over these things. All I'm saying is that you know, if you've got some controversial stance, but you're afraid of, of, of getting killed for it, well, then you might as well not even have the stance. But by the same token, if you're, if you're only an intellect, and you find yourself in the middle of a battle, or a fight, or a war, or whatever, then, I mean, bullets are flying by, and you're asking, what's the nature of humanity? Why are we here? Why are we fighting? They're killing us. They're trying to kill us. Ah, but did we ever truly live? And you're asking all these really inappropriate questions at the wrong times. So you don't want to be that person either. You, know, you want to be the person who, who's able to think and able to act. Someone who, who's, who's able to act, but also able to, to think. You gotta be both, man. You gotta be both, because otherwise you're giving over, like I said, if, if that's what it takes to make a full humanity, well, the human is just the microcosm of the macrocosm of humanity. What makes up humanity? Humans. So if it's good for humanity to be both, then maybe it's good for the human to be both as well. And again, it doesn't mean you run around and you have to, to get a PhD and then learn how to kick the crap out of everybody. That, that takes a lot. But, you know, if it's not your interest, it's not your interest. All it means is that you should have some level of confidence and have a reason for your confidence as well. In other words, you, know, you, you plan to be both. You know? I mean, think about when we have like generals, the people who run our, who, who run our military forces. Well, you know, do you want to have fools who run our military? Well, of course not. You know, because then they're going to make stupid decisions. They're going to get a whole bunch of people killed. And so you want to have it with, with both. And so be careful when you separate that because there's, there's, there's two very dangerous things in the world. Cowardly intellectuals and stupid warriors. Both of those people have the ability to create incredible damage. Incredible damage. And so... You know, people who are both of those have also the ability to create incredible damage, but they're controlled, but they're self-controlled. So, questions, comments, concerns, complaints, criticisms, critiques? Simple, straightforward.